Madam Toastmaster Varsha for those kind words. And today, what I am going to be sharing or talking about is HR's role in service excellence. Now, this is something that's been very close to my heart. No sooner they said we are starting the HR sessions, I said I would not mind doing one. Because the same thing we had done, something similar for the uh, Human Resources Forum, where we had said why HR should take the lead and how they can take the lead in ensuring the organization delivers great service and thereby satisfies its customers and in turn develops the business. Now, often than not, we feel, how is HR connected to that? But I feel there is a deep connection to the whole thing. Okay. CX initiatives exist in every organization, but I would ask you, are they aligned? How many would you say are aligned? Can you please raise your hands? That CX initiatives in an organization is aligned. Uh, customer experience initiatives or customer service initiatives together. Invariably, every department, in fact, every individual in a department has a different kind of a focus and way of thinking. They are all over the place. Departments see the customer. You have the sales front lines. You have the operations looking at the customer. The service, or it comes to invoicing, payments, receivables, is the finance which is looking at the customer. But are they looking at each other and how are they taking the whole thing ahead is the challenge. So who is going to bell the customer experience or the customer service cat in an organization? Do you think accounts should bell the customer experience cat? Yes or no? Do you think operations should do it? Do you think project management or any of the other people would ever do it? Do you think the management by themselves would take the initiative for customer experience? They got n number of things in their head. And that's actually not their responsibility in a way. Though they are answerable to it. So who do you think will bell the CX cat or the customer experience cat? I feel it is the people's people who should take this initiative ahead in any organization. Many may agree, many may feel differently, but I feel strongly that somebody has to bell the cat and take it forward. Who's going to do it has to be the HR. Now, why would I say something like that? Oops. It's important if you're the people's people you all have heard this phrase, hire for attitude. Now, do you all actually do it? We'll have a Q&A after I finish this. But if you hire for attitude, you are doing a good job. Because invariably, you look at the profile asked for by the department concerned and just go with the blinds on and see if that matches or not. I have often seen under job requirements, you want a superman, not an accountant. 25 of them written there, half of them are not even valid for people. Let's accept it. That's how I've seen it. Or, you hire for attitude and then you train for the skills. You come with the basic knowledge, but what is your attitude when you're handling in an organization? Are you that finance guy who's just got his nose buried in the books? On operations guy who only looks at his numbers? Or do you look around and see how we're going to take the organization ahead? HR's role 
should be to help departments to identify their customers. I'm going to be talking about this and coming to the details of this very soon. Steer the organization to deliver excellent service. Now, it is easier for me to talk and just make a statement, but how does this work and, and what should be the process behind it? They need to help management to walk their talk. We are a family and we do look together and the customer is the most important thing for us and he paces our bread and butter. I'm sure you've heard all this kind of stuff. No sooner they walk out, the management is too busy with their own problems. No sooner they walk out of the boardroom. Are they walking their talk? If they are not, who is going to tell them? Hey, listen, you, made, you said certain things. I think we need to look at some aspects of what you said. Is it accounts? He's only going to be talking numbers again. Any other department is going to be talking about their problems, not the organization as a whole. So I would say the people's people are the ones who should be taking this initiative ahead. I would say influence the management to review customer complaints and feedback. This is a simple example of how we can do it. Because if the management does a review of complaints every 15 days and see what's happening and it comes from there, it starts percolating down to the department heads who would then start taking a little bit of interest and taking it down to the front line. Whereas, if the front line has got a complaints department and a customer service, it just stops, ends and finishes there. How it's happened? Is it under the carpet? Nobody knows what's happened. Unless somebody says, I want to talk to a general manager. Even then it's not possible because there's always a bulldog waiting there. Who? Why? What? Send me an email. And by the time he says, forget it, I'm not interested. It never reaches the top. How do you hold the pulse of the organization and know what's happening? Just by looking at the balance sheet in the books of accounts? What about, what is your image out there in the market? How are people perceiving you, the organization? What, what is their thought about this organization, the management and the people? That's such an important thing. I have they given it a thought. When you handle customer complaints and complaints comes under the preview of the management, they start looking it up, they start taking it seriously and when that happens, everybody down the line starts taking it seriously. It can only come from top down, it can't go from bottom up. Very simple, I don't know why it gets so complicated. Spend one hour in 15 days by the management to review what happened in the previous complaints, what's been the outcome, what are the new complaints, how we're going to handle it, ensure it doesn't repeat itself. And HR has to be behind them to drive them. Unfortunately, that's the way it works. Invariably, this is the kind of scenario you always see where the top management is there and the customers write down and this everything goes around here, maximum it goes up to this point and that's it. Whereas if the management takes initiative in handling complaints, it could definitely and drastically change whereby you now start reaching the Everybody in the organization, including the management, the management approaches the customers. Imagine you have made a complaint. I made a complaint to Amazon. I received a mail back from Jeff Bezos's office, not from him, but from his office. And I can prove that because I have it with me. So if the general manager of an organization has to call a customer and say, hey, I heard such and such thing happened two months ago and we tried to sort this problem out. How is it now? Are you okay with it? Imagine what is the feeling of that customer. Is he going to be happy? Is he going to be elated? Is he going to tell a couple of people more that this organization takes its customers seriously? And who's behind that? HR. You have to drive them. They have lost, they have a focus, but it's very limited. How do you open them to do it? And who's going to do it? That's where we started this from, right?
This is just a leaf from my book, but I very strongly feel about this. Delighting customers is giving employees a pat on the back at every instance possible. Now, here we have, now let me see, I encourage Jim this week. He is due for a pat after two months, 12 months. Ron received four months ago. He is due, uh, Alice deserves one pat every week. You have a pat schedule there. Now, this is just a satire. Can you look at your employee and your teams and see what good can I see today and compliment your employee? Look, search for it. You will find it difficult to find good points to talk about your employee. It's easy to say you came late, which was not done properly, that report was not okay, these figures were not matching. You're wearing a nice dress, you did a great job, you came well on time today, everything fine. How's your family? Go ahead and do it and see how it changes the perspective of your team, of your family members, of your people in the organization. So, don't start looking at the faults of the people in your team. Start looking at the positive side and it will become a lovely coronavirus. People start talking positively. If I'm going to tell something nice, you're going to say thank you, right? You're going to come back to me over time. You, you tell it 10 times, you might receive it once back. Let's accept it. And that's the way the culture comes into place. Now, I'm talking about customer service, but I'm still talking about who are the people behind it. How HR views the people they come across determines how the people view the organization. If you think this person is just another number, a payroll, or just an employee number, that's the way he's going to look at you. But if you're going to see him as an individual, a human being, and treat him in that manner, have that interpersonal relation with the person, irrespective of who he is, that's HR's job. He may not be in your department. He need not be in your department. How do you handle him or her? How do you connect with those people? As much as you're talking of management, it's equally important to connect with the people down there. Because you are the people's people. I keep repeating this. Your employees. Anybody comes to you, do you see them as a pleasure or a pain? important to ask yourself how do you treat them as a guest coming to your department your house how do you take care of him do you talk to him or you're busy with your work and say mm, ah oh okay mm, ah oh and that's it think about it how do you deal with your new recruits how comfortable do you make them when they come to your house, to your office, to your organization, to your department and start work the first day when they're totally nervous, not knowing what to do? Do you make them comfortable in the organization? Do you have a buddy system where he's absolutely comfortable? Do you have a follow through after 15 days? Call him for an interview after that. How are things been going for you? Are you comfortable? Is there anything else we can do for you? End of the day, he's got to deliver stuff to you, but you also have an onus in the entire exercise. He is not there working for you just because he's going to collect a salary. This is the equation HR invariably tends to have that notion, but it should be broken. Break that. When I was working for one of the career services in Australia, after three months, I had another interview by HR asking them, how things were going for me. Did you learn? You come from a foreign country. We know that. Everybody comes from a different country in Australia anyway. But is there anything else we can do to improve? As a new joinee, as a new onboarder, how did you find it? It makes you feel good that these people do want me and to take care of me. Or would like to understand and I can voice myself. Candidates not selected for an, uh, for, uh, for an opportunity or a position, how do you treat them? Do you even bother to send a reject letter to them, empathizing that, hey, you are not able to do it for reasons X, Y, Z, you may be shortlisted. You are having 10,000 applications, perfectly fine, no problem. You have all the systems today working for you. 
can those systems not work automated messages letters going to the same employees you don't have to even waste paper today send it by email send them a nice letter we loved what you did but we don't have that opportunity for you we're going to keep you shortlisted or whatever else we wish you all the best for your future ventures treat them like a human being end of the day he said i went for the interview to that place and that's a lousy place don't ever go there for it it happened to somebody for a tea company in jablali here heard that this company is not a good employer checked went to glassdoor and checked there and found that reviews of this organization was poor and the person said i'm not even interested to go for the interview what is the image end of the day people's people they are also people who are going to buy products from you at some point in time why don't you see them that way why they come to you on your knees asking you for a job no they are going to produce something for you see it that way not that they come begging for a job no see them as a human being take care of that even if you part way so what innovate to engage creativity can come from any quarter in any manner you want and i believe innovation is everything this book of mine was an innovation and everybody so long as you have something in between there you can think outside this and innovate you can do something much more you can do something out of the box you can do something crazy bizarre but it'll work i promise you it'll work try it sometimes people will ridicule you but after some time they'll follow you be the trend leaders in hr organizations should be such that you have every department looking at the customer and at each other and working not in silos but as a collective force to reckon with where the organization sees the customer as all of us together get your entire cx aligned and in sync where everybody is looking at the customer we are looking at each other yes we're trying to see how we can get our act together you're playing a musical instrument you're playing another one and how can we sync the whole stuff and make good music out of it i feel hr plays a very key role in ensuring the other departments the people in the other department function and start looking at other people in the other department and the customer as human beings and start treating them like one when hr starts getting that initiative within and works motivates or engages and ensures the management does it and the employee starts doing the same thing they can't do it in isolation i agree they require the support but who's the driver HR's role to be the best workplaces in the UAE. I saw this last year or year before. It came in came in uh, Gulf News, one of these papers. How can we say I want to work for this organization? I would love to work for this organization. They're going to pay me thousand dirhams less, but it's still okay. I'm happy. Can you get to that kind of a situation where employees want to work for you? The best place to work, or? he joins today and from tomorrow he starts looking for another job when the boss is not looking he goes into google and looks for a job in linkedin and various other places it happens in everybody's organization i'm sure how can you hold that asset in the organization called people the most important asset and they're going to stand behind you and take your organization ahead when they deliver the best and how do they deliver the best who are the drivers behind the management maybe but hr i think plays a very key role in doing that think about it if you have any questions and if i can say answer it i'm more than happy here otherwise i promise i'll come back with a reply if i may say a life cycle i think we can go off this now thank you you've got 1000 applications all right and you've been able to filter thanks to artificial intelligence it goes by the words keywords etc etc 
the recruiters are also today writing your CVs. The recruiters who are writing your CVs know what the keywords are. You pay them a thousand dirhams and get your CV written, though your poles apart from what your CV says. How does it help? You pick the wrong guy and then you find that 15 days down the line, one month down the line, six months down the line, you need to look out again because they're not the right guy. Get sensible. Artificial intelligence to an extent helps. Don't be dependent on it. Number one, it starts from there. When you have recruited people or when you've rejected people, be polite and nice to them to say that thank you. That's the second aspect of it. We then move on to the person who's actually been appointed. Make sure from here the life cycle starts as you're saying. But HR's function is before that also. That's the reason I have to take you there and then move in here. Make sure he's comfortable in your organization from day one. And it's not you alone who says hand, hands over his finger to another person there. The next person should be equally nice towards that employee. That should be the culture. How do you develop that culture? It's not by you alone. It's not by management. It's a collective thing. It's not going to happen overnight. It's over a period of time. When people start understanding this is the way we do things here. When he's comfortable with the organization, he's going to give definitely much more of his uh, work output. Onboard him. Give him sufficient training. How many organizations here have counselors? Tell me. There are people coming who are stressed out here. How many have organizations have? Why are you stressed out? What's the problem? Do you have a personal problem or is anything else? Do you have counselors, part-time counselors in the organization who can talk to the employees? Help them with their mind, not only their body. KPI setting is organizational, so I wouldn't get into that, honestly. Ensure he is growing with the organization, and if he is not growing, help him to grow. End of the day, you have recruited him. You can't wash your hands off. Pardon? Definitely, if you have to. If you have to, you have to. Then after trying all that, you, you are talking to him, your boss, the department boss is talking to him, you have counselors taking care of him, what's the problem? And if it doesn't work, you find that he's not the right person, the right fit for this particular place, can you put him elsewhere? If you're not, then it comes to the final stages. But you've tried, you've done the emotional dustbin has acted, taken all the rubbish. Let's accept it, you're right. So what? Take it and see, that's, that's how it was. Then see if he can grow. If he can grow, let him grow, not because he's of this nationality he grows or this language he grows. That is not going to take your organization anywhere. He needs to be growing on merit. And if he's growing, if they say, no, train a person that he will leave the organization, treat the person that he will never do. And I'm sure he's going to stay with you for a long time. And if he ever has to part ways, you'll do it not burning any bridges. I wouldn't get into KPIs because it all depends on the organization or so many other different factors involved to a KPI. But even if you have to tell him, sorry, it's not working, he also knows you've taken the effort. Air Canada Bombay closed down in 1991. And the way they closed the organization and made it so beautiful was something I will still remember to date. I learned from how they did it. Any others? Over to you.